There's nothing more brutal than Quebec. Just stay calm, boys. French Canadians are a little odd. Today, we're ranking the albums of Cryptopsy all the way through their latest album, As Gamora Burns, and we're starting with Blasphemy Made Flesh in 1994. No. The mix on this thing is crazy raw and makes for a very destructive listen. Songs feel more like forces of nature than music. Just pure primal rage being channeled into the instruments. It's far from the best death metal debut I've heard, but it definitely ranks amongst the heaviest. And then later on it opens into some melodic, carcassy sounding parts with Serial Messiah. Definitely a strong start here in the discography. Unfortunately, the guitars can get a bit washed out at times with the pingy drumming being more of a highlight for me, and the songwriting's pretty boiler point overall. It just doesn't quite have that cryptopsy stamp on it just yet. So, good, I'm gonna put it at B tier. But they followed that up with None So Vile in 1996. <laughs> Just two years later, we get what is widely regarded as their best album, and the reasons for this are clear. This record maintains, if not ramps up, the rabid bloodlust of the debut while also stepping up the songwriting and overall performances. Lord Worm in top form here on vocals, though sadly he would leave the band for nearly a decade after this one. It's also a very concise album at just 32 minutes while once again delivering on a number of different areas from the brutal to the earworm. And the speed here is just absolutely Absolutely insane. Lots of great tracks in Crown of Horns, Slit Your Guts, and Phobophile. And the cover art is Elisabetta Serrani's Herodias with the head of John the Baptist. We all know this one has to go to S tier. Well, obviously. Next up is Whisper Supremacy in 1998. <laughs> Mike DeSalvo stepping in on vocals for this one, which definitely does change up the sound a bit. Miguel Roy also bringing some changes to the riffs. Pretty craterous in its own right and bringing its own strengths to the table. Ultimately, I do appreciate that unlike some other death metal discographies, each of these albums has its own distinct personality. And it's a pretty fitting follow-up with some fantastic moments, great bass intro to Cold Hate Warm Blood, love those wailing riffs on White Worms, and the unhinged mathy chaos of Depths You've Fallen. Cool little spooky bass break on Faceless Unknown, too. My only real point of detraction is Mike's vocals, which are very one note and even become a little grating over time on this one. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Still above average overall, but definitely stepping down quite a bit from None So Vile. I'm also putting this one at B tier. Next up is And Then You'll Beg in 2001. <laughs> Appropriate to the title, it feels like we're doubling down on the brutality again here, even taking a more raw production sound that reminds me a bit of the debut. And then it passes, coming in hot with some serious bludgeoning chaos. That bass tone is disgusting. Heavy emphasis on technical performances here and some improvements to the vocals here from the previous album, but they still get a little bit haphazard, even goofy sounding at times. I will say that despite how impressive the performances are though, I don't think that the songwriting is quite as tight or memorable. There are some other Standouts though, like My Prodigal Son, the sometimes proggy Soar and Envision Soar Vision, and Screams Go Unheard with the throat singing. Mike DeSalvo and guitarist John Lavasseur would depart after this one. I'm gonna put it at C tier. By the way, as we're going along, this is all up for debate. It's all subjective, so please share your own rankings and thoughts down in the comments as we go along. And if you're enjoying the video, hit the like button. But next up, we have Once Was Not in 2005. Lord Worm returning on vocals, but for his final outing with the band and definitely not his best work, I would say. That classical guitar intro is a welcome reprieve, though. When you go at 11 nonstop, it starts to kind of lose its meaning, so you need these counterpoints to really emphasize the contrast. These go to 11. And that shift to the cavernous in the kingdom is about as stark a contrast as you can get. Love the little jangly guitar break on this one, too. Unfortunately, I think that this one also lacks focus in the songwriting, and I think that losing John on guitar in particular 
particular for the first time really shows. Pretty rough production too, feeling very muddy and almost demo quality. Often this one feels more obnoxious than brutal in my opinion. As for other songs I do enjoy, The Curse of the Great is quite eerie and Keeping the Cadaver Dogs Busy has kind of a proggy psychedelic vibe in places that reminds me of Gigan. Some improvements from the last one, but also some weaker elements as well. So I'm also going to put this one at C tier. Then we have the somewhat infamous The Unspoken King in 2008. So this album is pretty famously hated by many fans for switching to more of a deathcore style with the introduction of current vocalist Matt Magetchi and with keys provided by Maggie Durant. Personally, it reminds me a little of early Aborted. I can see why purists would hate it, but I also think that there's still plenty to enjoy here from the blast beats to the noodly technical parts. In many ways, it does sound like a different band, but the old formula also seemed to be going a little stale, so I'm kind of torn in that way. I think my bigger issue is that I still don't find the songs to be very engaging regardless of genre and I could definitely do without the horrible clean vocals on this thing it reminds me of local metalcore acts I would watch back in high school and this coming from somebody who is generally a pretty big metalcore fan especially the 2000s era stuff <laughs> what is that what what is that what is that noise? So yeah, ultimately it is a D, but I also don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. And they followed that up with Cryptopsy in 2012. So fortunately, they came back in a big way with this one, at least in my opinion. There are still some very mild deathcore touches here, but dropping all the worst elements while keeping the good ones and mixing in some melodic death metal influences for good measure. John Levasseur back doing his thing on guitar, and I really dig the kind of the Black Dahlia murder riffs on Two Pound Torch to kick this thing off at 11 again. Lots of great riffs in general, both from the guitar and the bass. Some turbocharged jams here in the likes of Damn Draft Dodgers, Ominous, Redskin, Scape goats got that awesome surprise jazz break maybe this will make some people mad but i actually want to put this one at a tier i feel like this is them fully integrating the new lineup to its potential again let me know in the comments if you disagree but we're moving on to the book of suffering tome one in 2015 and the book of suffering tome two in 2018 So these next two are part of an EP series interconnected in concept, and while I generally stick to LPs, one, this discography is pretty short to begin with, and two, I love these EPs. They are not skippable, in my opinion. In fact, I think that these represent some of the hardest, fastest, most brutal tech death the band has ever put out to date, and with basically no fat on the bone thanks to the concise four-track under 20-minute run times. Efficiency, Commander. Every single song kills, but my personal favorites are Detrius, the constantly shifting hollow thing glow, the maniacal sire of sin, and almost funky battering of the laws of the flesh. Just total bangers, and frankly, I think it may be some of the best tech death of the 2010s in general. So I'm actually putting these EPs at S tier. And that brings us to As Gamora Burns in 2023. <laughs> solid single with In Abeyance getting me fairly hyped for release. This album was worked on over two years during the pandemic with the initial sessions even taking place in a secluded cabin in the woods of Quebec. Getting back. That's your concern. The album art is courtesy of prolific Italian artist Paolo Giardi, which aside from playing into the biblical themes, also seems to be playing pretty direct tribute to Whisper Supremacy. Regardless, opening up on a seriously battering note with Lascivious Undivine bringing their most aggressive tech death, the vocals are insanity, especially that little maniacal laugh that Matt throws in. I'd say that much of this feels like a continuation of that Book of Suffering sound, with maybe a bit more groove in general, and it feels perfect for this to drop the same week as the new Don fetus. Ill Ender is another standout bringing some stellar moments on both fronts going hyper speed in the first half before getting slow and swampy in the second. Flayed the Swine is another one that made an instant impression with that stank face inducing intro riff transition. Ah! 
killer death clocky solo on this one too, definitely a smart choice for a single. Ollie's bass parts on the Righteous Lost alongside Flo's Righteous Drumming also got me making this face. And closing on a particularly ominous and foreboding note with Praise the Filth. Y'all, no duds here. Once more, I appreciate a band that even after a five year break between material and 30 plus years in is still disciplined enough to focus on quality at a lean and mean 34 minutes. It really is some of their best work, I think. So I'm putting this one at A tier. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more death metal rankings, everything from Cannibal Corpse, Dying Fetus, so on and so forth. And again, let me know down in the comments how would you rank these differently. Let's get a conversation going. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.